Good day, gentlemen. It's time for another Ask the Reclusive Old Farmer for Dating Advice section with James Marshall. So here's the question. How to overcome approach anxiety. I'm still struggling to start conversations after a few years of watching your video on YouTube. Before I do that, I've got one other very quick question by Hawker Hawthorne, which is an excellent porn star name, I must say. If you see a girl on the streets you want to approach and you look at her and then she shakes her head, often without looking back at you, would you still approach? So that's, you look at her, she's like, the answer to that is probably not. Now let's get on to the main question. The mirror's image. So this question about the dreaded approach anxiety. It's not the first time I've heard this question and certainly won't be the last. And I've explained this in many, many different ways, but today what I wanna to give you is my five top tips uh, for dealing with the feeling of being nervous and scared and frozen when it comes to going and speaking to women, right? So this approach anxiety thing, which we've talked about and known about for many decades, do you have a case? Have you been to the doctor? They've, they've said, yes, yes, I'm afraid. He's got it, approach anxiety. Oh no. All right, let's have a look at this. How does it work? Before you knew that it was possible for a guy who was normal to go and talk to girls on the street, you didn't feel approach anxiety, right? So you're walking along the street, you see a girl and you're like, oh, I wish that she would walk into my uni class or that someone would introduce me. So you might feel a kind of longing or a forlorn sadness, but you're not really feeling anxiety because you don't know you can go and do something. Then at some point you saw a video of me or someone else go, uh, going over and saying, hi there, my name's James, what's your name? And by magic, she talks to me and then you're like, hmm, maybe I can do this or maybe I want to do this. And that's when the approach anxiety starts, right? You go out, you see the girl and there is a sequence of events. Now it's, it might be slightly different for everybody, but in general, here's what happens. Cause we want to look at there is a, there's a process, there's an internal process, because this is about you, right? Like it's how you're feeling, what you're doing or not doing. And it's not, you know, it's not really related to the woman or anything external, it's all going on in your own mind and your, your body and your emotions. So we need to look at, okay, how do we deal with this? So what's the sequence first? All right, we have external stimulation, which is hot babe. I see her and Within a fraction of a second, something happens in my body. My body activates. Now, most guys, when they're starting out at this, will misinterpret this as anxiety. Now, unless you have clinical anxiety, right, like you actually have something that's, uh, you know, being diagnosed, I would suggest that this is not anxiety. This is activation, and that's a much better way to look at it, even as a reframe. So my body starts doing stuff. Write your own list, you know what it is. Butterflies in the stomach, sweating palms, tightness in the throat, the need to jiggle, right? You just suddenly got to jiggle something. And little note, if you have to jiggle something, wiggle your toes. Yeah, you weren't expecting that, right? So imagine you've got to get up and give a big speech or go and approach a girl and you've got all this nervous energy inside you. What do you do with it? Just wiggle your toes. I'm doing it right now. And I look super calm. Right now my toes are going like this. Okay, there's a little, there's another bonus tip. Right, so you get this external stimulation, your body does stuff. You feel different things. And what this really means is that you're out of homeostasis. Humans like to be warm and comfortable and for things to be fairly predictable, as well as liking risks and excitement from time to time. But we like to keep things on an even keel. And when we're outside of that, when we, when we feel flustered or we're, we're activated in some way, if we're not comfortable in that environment, we may interpret it as fear or anxiety, which I would suggest uh, even as a thought experiment, let's put that aside and say it's not. It's just your body reacting to the stimulus. Then, here's what the nasty thing that happens is your mind gets involved and starts to put value judgments, opinions, to start explaining to you this big story about, you know, why you're a loser or how you'll never get women or why she's a bitch or that chick would never give you the time of day and so on and so on. We start writing these bad movies and coaching ourselves badly in our heads with an expectation of the worst possible outcome. And so, as our mind's involved, our body's activated, we're feeling this stuff, we feel uncomfortable, we've interpreted these feelings as negative, as anxiety. What happens? You freeze up and you remove yourself from the tension by going away. And there's your pattern. Right now we've charted, this is what happens to you that leads you to not go for what you want. So what can you do about this? I've been coaching men for over a decade 
uh, on this subject as well as you know the more interesting things that come after this because this I, I don't want to get stuck and you don't want to get stuck in the most boring frustrating part of pickup which is the uh, am I going to do it am I going to do it you want to get into doing it so you can start to correct and learn so how do we deal with this phenomenon I teach this in broad detail in the Marshall Meditation Method, which is one of my online programs, which is on sale right now for over 50% off for the Black Friday sales, which are ending very shortly. Take advantage of that. But in brief, here's what we can do. We can't stop necessarily our body activating, right? We can't stop the bubbles and squeaks and the things going on in our belly and the shaking and this kind of stuff. We can't necessarily control that. What we can do, though, is we can cut between the sensation and the interpretation, right? So when you get in your mind and you start making these stories, now it's kind of getting out of control and now we, we are deliberately, in a way, painting it with a negative brush. So what you need to do is bring it back to what you can do, which is if I can't control, I can observe. And the nature of most meditation systems is this, to observe what is and to allow it to be with grace. Right, this is the, the core of what meditation is. So instead of me getting in my head and causing myself problems by overthinking things, I bring myself back to what's real right now, which is my bodily sensations. And I observe them and I try not to react. Right, so I can feel my feet on the ground, I can feel my palms, I can feel my breath, I can feel my heart rate, and note that it's different. I'm activated, my heart's beating a bit faster, maybe there's a bit of you know, perspiration on my brow or whatever, okay. That's all right, that just means my body's doing some stuff. Can I still go over there and say hi at the very least? Yes, you can. And it's vitally important that you do go and say hi when you're feeling that stuff. Because if you're waiting to feel like an awesome, sexy boss all the time before you go and approach girls, you may never do it. Or you may only randomly do it once in a blue moon when you took some cocaine and it's your birthday and you feel cool. <laughs> um, so if I, can go, if I can feel this stuff and get and note my mind and go, okay, instead of that, let me just try and relax my body, get into my body, observe what's going on, walk over and note the sensations that are happening, say hi, do something, and then excuse myself if I need to. Hi, how are you? You look pretty. I'm gonna go now. Bye, cool. That's, although it seems like a tiny step, it's actually a big step because it means you're operating in spite of the activation of your sensations. <coughs> Swallow to fly. And then uh, after that, it means that you'll see that things change, right? Like you don't stay at that same peak anxiety forever. It reaches a, p a point and then usually the point where it crests down into being more relaxed is after that first moment of awkwardness. Hi, how are you? Peak intense thing. She's like, hi, I'm good. Relaxation for a moment. Uh, tension building again. What are you doing today? She says, I'm going for a walk, right? So there's, there's these undulating waves, if you like, uh, of pressure and release. And you'll feel them internally, the, the internal pressure of like, I'm not sure what to do right now. And then I do something and then it resolves. And then that continues. That's the nature of seduction. And it's actually a beautiful thing. Because once we start to harness this pressure release, it turns into sexual tension. It turns into intensity. Instead of us trying to be bland and nice and avoid these things all the time, which doesn't lead to the sex. That's number one, reinterpret what's going on in your body as activation, not anxiety. Observe it, allow it to do its thing and move forward and say hi anyway. Numero dois. My second tip for overcoming the dreaded approach anxiety is desensitization, man. So what this means is to break up the process of doing approaches into smaller manageable pieces. Right now, if I said to you, okay, so the next beautiful woman that you see alone or with a friend, I want you to go over there, get in front of her, do a dead stop, get her eye contact, say forcefully, excuse me, use a pre-frame. I was with my buddy over there, skinning an Ibex, and I saw you and I just had to run over here and tell you that you look ravishing today. And then I want you to get into a conversation with her. I want you to qualify, connect, flirt. Uh, and then I want you to close smoothly and come out with the digits and with a guaranteed date. If I told you to do that right now, that might seem like a daunting prospect, although it's a good idea. And if you're going out to do your 
to thinking you're going out to do approaches and you go around all day dreading this entire thing. Like I, you're not sure how do I start it? How do I keep it going? How do I finish it? How do I make her like me? How do I challenge her? How do I, you know, not be a simp whilst not being a dick? All of this stuff. I'm trying to hold all of these plates in my head and spin them when I don't have much experience with them. And then again, it's too much pressure. I overthink it and then I either fuck off and don't do anything or I go over and go, ah, eh, ah, because I'm thinking six steps ahead. Instead, let's break it down to its smallest components and just drill those. Right, because in the question that this guy said, there's a bit of a, there's, there's tragedy in those couple of lines, isn't there? When you think about it, where he's like, I've been watching these, your YouTube videos for years and I haven't been able to approach. That makes me feel sad, right? Because I'm trying, like I'm doing everything I can to give you information that's gonna assist you in this. But if you've got a guy who's aware of this, really wants to do it, is researching it and studying it, and for years he hasn't approached, that's the entire um, apprenticeship of seduction that he could have gone through by now. Within two, three years of doing this, even just like moderately, right? So I go out and I meet a few girls or half a dozen or 10 girls a week. Uh, or even if I spent the first three months doing what I'm telling you now, which is to go and desensitize, after three months, you'd feel fine saying hi and giving compliments. You know, if you built it up, getting into mid game, into the middle of conversations, you know, six months in, you'd be fine with that, right? So at, even at a snail's pace, after a year or, of this, that guy would be on dates, right? And instead, he's still watching YouTube videos. Okay, thanks for the view, but I want you to fuck off and talk to girls and then come back and learn something new. So you don't wanna be in that position, right? Okay, ignorance is, is an excuse to some extent. There's a point in my life for the first 26 years of my life where I didn't know it was really even possible to do this, so I didn't do it. Now I look back and I go, oh, I wish I'd known that at 19. It would have made my early 20s more interesting, but I didn't know what I didn't know and then I learn it, and then I went straight out and applied it. If you know it, and you don't go and apply it, you're fucking yourself over. Now, I don't wanna to be too hard on you, but I wanna give solutions. So let's look at, okay, what can we do? The first thing you can do is you can walk out the door every single day and stand up tall and meet the world at eye line, right? Because if I just walk around like this, my life, I will never bump into someone. I'm never gonna get the eyes from a girl. I'm never going to, develop the intensity to project intent, to be able to hold clear eye contact, to be able to say what I mean, to be able to go, go for what I want. And so if you just take this simple step where you walk out the door and walk along the street and look people in the eyes, particularly girls, and if you look pretty girls in the eyes and smile at them, this is a process. I'm already making eye contact. I'm already making non-verbal contact with my smile, and then I can gradually grade that. So if I go, today I'm gonna to walk around the streets and smile at some people and look them in the eyes. You do that for a week, you'll see that they'll, you'll get reactions, right? Some people will avert their eyes, like the other guy who asked the question, she shakes her head, like, no, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, you read those signals, you notice. Sometimes a girl shakes her head or blanks me completely or gives me a weird look. Yeah, you're gonna be the recipient of weird looks, trust me, when it comes to this. It's worth it for the payoff. Uh, and other girls will smile back at you. Maybe, maybe someone will say hello and then, and then look at you as you walk by going, uh, and then, you know, like giving you an opportunity. You do that dozens and dozens of times, you'll get the spread of, of what's likely to happen and some of those things will be positive and some of them will be invitations, non-verbal or otherwise, for you to come and speak to a girl, right? So let's keep that in mind. You go out, you make eye contact and you smile. Maybe you do that for one day, or you do that for one hour or one session. And then you add to that a wave to get really into someone's space and project your voice. Hi there, like that. It can't be like this, hey, hey. No, it's gotta be like, I'm making an impact. Hi there. And then she looks at me or doesn't, and I say, you look awesome today, have a great day, and then I let her go. That is the unrejectable approach. It's like a walk-by compliment. Just go by and go, you're hot, and I keep going. All right? the, I'm just giving something away, I'm not even expecting anything in return. And so the woman can take the gift and go, oh, thank you very much, or she can drop it on the ground and go, bleh, and that's fine, right? Because I have infinite amounts of, hi, you look amazing today to give out to people, right? So in this way, if you start today, you don't need to know the full textbook of how to do everything with seduction. Sure, study, research. Take advantage of the Black Friday sales right now and get the five principles for over 50% off and learn the whole canon and the whole system. Great, it's awesome to have these models in mind, but I didn't develop the models by sitting there and studying and working in my basement for a year. I gradually developed what I know and now teach by going out there and going, uh, hi, 
or going over to a girl once, I remember going and saying to a blonde girl, hey, I've realized I'm invisible to blonde girls. What's that all about? And she's like, uh, I don't know. And then, I was, and then she walked off and I went, that opener sucked. And I kept on trying and trying until I figured out that basically speaking your truth, being clear, direct, no bullshit, with a bit of flirty cheekiness to it seems to be the best thing that works for me and most of the introverted guys that I teach, so I'm gonna roll with that. Right, but that came from many false starts by tripping and stumbling, and there is so much benefit and personal growth to be had in the beginner's face, even though it hurts. Right, and most guys don't get through the beginner's hell. They, they make a few false starts, or like this gentleman here, they just sit there researching for years until they kind of give up, and that is a tragedy. Because this does matter. This is not a hobby. This is not another, a thing like, oh, you know, I picked up skiing once and I kind of did it a bit, and then I, I'm not into skiing anymore. It's like, if you're not into human relationships, sex, feeling loved and worthy and having beautiful people in your life, if you feel like that's a hobby, then cool, put it aside. But for most people, this is a survival need. So desensitize yourself, little steps, but get those steps started today. So I got a question. Do you have any women in your life, a female friend, that you could hang out with and let out a big fart and you'd feel fine about that? Now have a think about that for the next day. Now uh, the reason I bring this up is to bring you in a roundabout crude way to my third great tip on how to uh, get over feeling scared of talking to hot girls. And that is, people like to fart on girls. Look, it was an idea I just had. You know how I work, I just say things and they all usually fit together. Get some female friends. The, one of the reasons why I got good at this, now there was, I would say I got good very fast when it came to approaching. I started when I was 26, within about six months I was really good and within a couple of, I don't know, 18 months, two years I was teaching and I had the dating life that I really re wanted. So I accelerated really quickly and there was a couple of things that helped me along the way. One was that I'd studied meditation for a long period of time so I was able to figure this stuff out with the approach anxiety and to make myself feel calm. The second thing was that although I wasn't cool at school and, and wasn't uh, a Chad alpha dude, I had a lot of female friends. I'd put a lot of it, time and energy into making good and real female friends, not just a girl that I'm trying to have sex with and I'm pretending to be friendly with, that's not what I mean. Uh, and not just kind of like, you know, the girlfriend of my friend that I was sort of friendly with. I mean, girls that I would hang out with one-on-one, -on -one. we would watch movies, we would talk about our feelings, we would fart in front of each other, we'd cook each other dinner, we'd just hang out as people. And what this meant was that I was comfortable around attractive uh, women in general and attractive women because I spent time with them outside of the high-pressurized, zero-sum stakes game of trying to get them into bed. If you're a guy that has almost no contact with women at all, and then the only contact you have with them is trying to run up and do cold approach, props to you, like that's awesome, and you, if you have nobody else in your life, then you gotta do that. But that's a hard way to learn about women, right? I've gotta roll up to a stranger with no context, we're not at a party, we're not in a, a class or anything, and I need to get her to stop and talk to me, and I need to relax, and then I need to be able to break down the barriers between strangers really quickly and get to know her and then make, hopefully she becomes attracted to me and wants to see me again. This is not an easy skill set to learn, right? It's necessary, it's the one that may end up defining the entire happiness of your life and possibly your children, um, but it is not an easy skill set. And trying to do it dead cold when like women are a kind of an alien species and you don't really know much about them, that's a hard way to do it. So yes, you must do the cold approaching, you must go and meet strangers. You can't rely on your social circle for your, the rest of your life to try and get your girlfriends, unless you're in some extremely vivacious, varied, hot young thing, social circle where there's lots of cute girls around and you're in a position of power within that. Okay, maybe. But in general, you're gonna go out, have to go out and source your lovers. So what I would say is, because when I'm, when I'm teaching this, which is all that that I teach, I hit it from three main pillars, right? Inner game, external game seduction, and lifestyle design. These, things, these three aspects act as a tripod to hold up the awesomeness of your life. Put that on Instagram. Um, 
if I only focus on, on pickup, I can become really one-sided. If I only focus on personal development in a game, then I'm just like a kind of calm, hippie dude who can't socialize. If I only try to create leverage through lifestyle design, then I may end up pouring massive amounts of time and resources into trying to look cool and build status, uh, when it would have been much easier to just go over and say, hey, you wanna go on a date? You combine these three things, or you work on these three things in tandem, sometimes emphasizing one over the other, but in general working on them, then you are building a really solid foundation as a man, as a social creature, and as a guy who's got prospects in the dating world. So, what I'm saying is, in amongst you going out and doing your highs and getting into conversations at whatever level you currently feel comfortable with, try to ingratiate yourself, connect with, and make friends with good women, right? And there are good women, all right? Someone who is kind, someone who is friendly, someone who's funny, someone who will be honest with you and give you insights about herself and women, but will also talk to you about yourself and, and be able to give you her advice. Now, not every woman knows, you know, her dating advice is not always impeccable, but we are going to learn about how women interpret things, even if it's not so much the exact reality of things. I understand women really, really well from hanging out with them for 40 years in all sorts of situations, and I've seen them through their tantrums, through their, their strong, proud moments, through their love affairs, you know, dealing with their day-to-day -day stuff. I understand their worries and their concerns about getting older and their beauty and their competition with other guys and are they gonna, with other women, and are they gonna get the guy of their dreams and all this stuff that I understand pretty intimately. And so I'm totally chill and comfortable being around women in general. Don't try and do this just in isolation. You're not an American psycho stuck in your, well, hope not, stuck in your apartment, going out to like feed, bring a girl back, and then get rid of her, and that's your only social world. That, that's not healthy, and it's not the way you'll become the greatest seducer or the most effective anyway. By spreading your, your bets, by spreading your energy and your attention between the working on yourself as a human being, feeling more at ease with yourself, meditating, using inner game tools, doing ayahuasca, whatever tools you use to expand your consciousness and feel more awesome. Uh, if you're doing that and you're also working on building meetup groups, starting parties, joining different uh, clubs or activities which are mixed, where you're not trying to go and hustle the chicks and pick them up necessarily, you might be going to a dance class to learn to lead and to learn to project intent and to touch and to get to feel comfortable and normal around cute girls, this is worth way more than, to you than trying to like sharpshoot the one girl in the class that you might be able to pick up. And then of course, we tie that all together with our social practice, that is the, I am going out and meeting strangers, I am making connections, I am asking girls out on dates as often as I can. This is going to give you the best uh, chances or the, you know, the, the best effects when it comes to improving in these areas. All right, so there's your next tip which is to fart in front of your female friends. Number four on my list of excellent strategies for dealing with the issues of talking to ladies is an internal one. This is where you need to you know, sit down and spend some time with, with yourself and, and have some hard discussions. Because there are two things I want you to look at in your mind. One is, What's the alternative? And the second one is, what is at stake? Now, everyone on this planet is sold some kind of romantic bullshit fantasies by Disney and the media and their parents and religions and so on. There is generalized bad advice to guys that aren't proactive with women and aren't going out and getting their needs met, which is to basically wait, essentially, with the, with the, with the idea that uh, fate and the universe really cares about your dating life and eventually, eventually, is going to slot you the perfect partner or you'll bump into them on the street or most likely you'll find them on an app, I guess, uh, and you'll live happily ever after. Now, this is just not the reality. Of course, people meet in all sorts of ways. Some people do bump into each other. Some people do marry their childhood sweethearts and have an amazing time. Some people are introduced to uh, someone and that's amazing. All right, cool, but are you going to wait around for fate, for chance, for someone else to do this for you? Uh, no, you're not, because you wouldn't be watching this otherwise. You'd be one of the many people living in, in uh, sleepwalking through their dating lives. So it is really important to ask yourself this question, what is the alternative? Like, what's your plan? And you better have one. Men spend, if they're kind of, let's say, um, 
responsible, they spend a decent amount of time planning their life, like thinking about their career, starting to save for retirement, planning their investments, uh, you know, buying crypto at the right time or whatever. And men will put a lot of emphasis into, like I'm building something of equity in my life. But for many men, they don't really consider their relationship lives in, in this way. They don't have a plan. They don't have a strategy. Uh, and they're, they're letting this generalized kind of vague idea that the one will find you or you'll figure it out or when you're, when you're ready, the right person will turn up or, or right now you're going to focus on your career for how long? Like, sure, okay, sometimes I do a project and I don't see girls for some time, but if that means 10 years of your life, you're like, I've just got to focus on work through my 20s and my 30s, then you missed your 20s and your 30s when it came to the fun shit, the, the, the having sex with girls, the adventures, the friendships, and so on. And you can't get that back. You only get your 20s, 30s, and 40s once, as far as I know. Uh, and planning meticulously for your, your financial retirement without actually considering what I'm going to do with my relationship and sexual retirement or maintaining it throughout my life is not smart. So then you, the question is, what's the alternative? Because I'm, I'm saying my option I present to you is learn how to speak to strangers at the end of the day. It's that. And if you don't want to do that because it's hard and because it feels weird and because your palms sweat or whatever and you're like, I can't deal with that because I'm, I'm not willing to get over those what are actually momentary mis uh, discomforts, then you better be thinking about what's your alternative. So what else we got on the market? Swipeity swipe. Uh, we've all tried this and we all know it's demoralizing. Just look up a couple of videos which have been done much better than ones I could do on the evil business of Tinder and look at how the algorithms work. 80% of the women never even see, you, see your profiles. There's a 10, uh, something like nine to one ratio of women to men on there the other way around. The one where there's way more men than, than women, right? So even if your game's on point, even if your photos are amazing, even if the girls are seeing your stuff, you're still not dealing with 90% of potential prospects that are out there. They're out meeting men some other way. How are they doing, how are they doing that? How are they doing that? I don't know. No, I do know. They're doing it primarily through social circle, right? Women are meeting guys through their extended social circles and going out going to clubs, going to parties, being social animals and then bumping into people within their, generally within their social spheres. And okay, they might meet some guy online or there might be an Instagram fuckboy who takes their fancy and they may be involved in that as well. But still, most women are most of the time going to meet their, their significant others in real life in some kind of way. So trying to optimize your dating life through apps is a losing game. Sure, have it as a, like a, as a tiny part of your investment spread. If that means you rock up into a new city or once a week you crunch the swipes and then out of that maybe you get one match and you follow that up, fine, okay, cool. So you might be able to meet. I've met a couple of girls on Tinder that I'm like glad that I met them, but not that many. Uh, so you can have that as an option, but don't get into the misconception that you are working, that you are doing something, that you are learning anything, that you're really being effective with your time. Most of the time you're just feeling shit about yourself and the algorithm is working against you because it wants you to be like, a, like any casino, it wants you to win just a little, just enough to keep you there, but to main, mainly lose and lose because it is the losers, and I don't mean that as a value judgment, that, but the men who lose in love that keep Tinder afloat. That's where the money's being made. So don't be one of those people. So what, are, what other alternatives are there? Okay, then there's, there is social networking, social circle stuff. Again, if I just sit in my social circle, unless it's incredible, like unless I just happen to hang out, all my friends are Burning Man dudes and strippers and models and whatever, I happen to be in that kind of world, which most people aren't, uh, then I will have to be really proactive about my social circle. Yes, you can meet women by going and meeting people and then meeting them through people. That's the way actually humans have met each other throughout all of history or their parents allocated it to them or it was the you know the cousin of the friend across the in the next village or whatever so that's totally legit but it requires you to have an extended network of people if you only hang out with your four buddies who all play video games and don't have girlfriends and don't hang out with girls hanging out with these people will not assist you in your sexual social life at all in fact it will be detrimental they may still be amazing friends and they're people that you can keep in your life but if you want to build a social circle which includes attractive young women uh, and, an, and an interesting fun dynamic that they want to be around then you'll have to work on that 
How do you do that? Well, that's a whole big thing. I teach that in lifestyle uh, design components of the five principles, which is on sale right now and many of the other products. Uh, but it starts with you going, well, how am I going to allocate my time to, to best affect change in my life? And I can tell you from over 10 years of experience of, of you know, I'm a dating nerd. I have, I have studied everything from using leverage and money and friends and status and cold approach and online and all sorts of things. And the thing that delivers the best results over and over again is developing the ability to go over there and say hi. Before I got into pickup, I was a musician. Now I wasn't famous, but I was famous in my town, in my scene. You know, I used to play gigs where there'd be 200 people there. That's right, 200 people sometimes. And so I was like a tiny bit famous in my local scene and there would be girls at the gigs, right? Cute girls would go and watch bands. And sometimes after a show, I would go over and I'd say, hey, you saw me in the band? And she'd be like, yeah, that's how Australians do it. Yeah, oh yeah, cool, do you want uh, uh, something? And maybe I would hook up with a girl. It happened from time to time. I had some groupies, not super hot ones and not very often. But I had the shock of my life at the age of 26 when I first learned about the idea of cold approach and just started going out and doing it not very well. And I wasn't taught, I didn't learn a method. I was just like, I'm gonna go and say stuff to girls. Within a couple of weeks, I was on dates with and then sleeping with women that were far more beautiful, far more coveted than any woman I'd ever met through music. I've been playing music for years and years for the music, but also quite a bit, mostly, almost all because of the chicks, hoping I would get chicks. And I got a few, but once I started going, I'm going, oh, hi, my name is James. I saw you, what's your name? I'm on dates with hotties almost instantly, right? within, within weeks. And then, and then as I started, I continued both those practices for the next few years. I played in my band for another four years and I still occasionally met girls through that. And I was at the same time I was cold approaching and the numbers were dwarfed. Like over, over a couple of years, it was extremely clear that there's no comparison. Me busting my ass to try and win the status game uh, was a losing battle compared to just getting the balls to go out there and do this. So what's your alternative? Ask yourself, because the consequences of this are dire. A month goes by, six months go by, a year goes, two years go by and you got lucky once or you didn't at all or you had that half something with someone and then another six or eight or two months or two years, whatever passed. I hear these horror stories all the time. I get the client files, guys like, you know, what's your history with women? And he says something like, you know, when I was 22, I met this girl, something, something, it didn't work out. Five years later, I'm like, five years later? Holy shit, what happened in those five years? Nothing, nothing with women at all. Not a single person touched his dick or gave him a kiss or gave him a compliment or put, his, put their arm around him or snuggle up next to him or said that he was cool or any, any of the amazing shit that you can get out of being with women, nothing for five years. And then, and then, you know, and then some other person comes into their social circle and they fumble around with that and they, it works or it doesn't work and then another year's pass by. This is not acceptable. Are you going, I mean, for me it's not. I, I was not willing to accept that type of life when I was 26 and I was not unsatisfied with it, so I was willing to do what it took. Which brings me to my final point. I've been teaching cold approach, natural style pickup for nearly 15 years now. And so I've seen literally thousands of guys come and go, come into courses, come to seminars and so on. And I've kept in touch with a good amount of those guys. And I've seen what's happened in the years post training or post them self training. And there is a very big distinction. It's not really that there's like a bunch of guys in the middle who sort of do this a bit and when, when they need to and they kind of date girls and do a bit of this. Those guys, it's not so much that. It's pretty stark. It's either guys don't really do anything after they've done coaching, which is a tragedy and sucks and doesn't feel good when I've put all this effort and I really want them to change, but some guys just don't do anything. And then you got the guys that just go and fucking do it. And over the months and years that f subsequently follow, it's very evident what the results are. And there's, because I'm trying to, I've, tr I've looked at this trying to see like, what's the X factor that makes the, the real difference? The, the difference between the guys who, who get this and the guys who let this slide. And yeah, there's, there are lots of elements involved. Okay, so there are 
different levels of communication ability or of confidence. There's certainly aspects of like where they position themselves in terms of are they in tiny towns where there's no girls or are they involved in social circles where there's a lot of uh, females around. So there's lots of different elements that will make a difference and there are many things that will make it easier or harder, right? Like getting a wingman, I mean, there's another tip. Here's, here's my wingman. Hey, guy. <laughs> hey, man. Having, having a guy or girl that you go out and talk to girls with makes it much easier and more fun, right? It's having social circles where people are going out and interacting with the opposite sex uh, and getting involved in activities together, dancing and partying and munging on pills and saving the whales or whatever it is that you want to do with your ladies, those guys will get way more opportunities. It'll be easier because instead of me needing to go all the way over there and say hi to a stranger, I might be able to say hi to someone in my social circle and get something started. Okay, that, these, these elements come into play. But at the end of the day, the big thing that makes a difference is just this kind of unknowable piece. And I can't, I can't, I can't pick it when I, when I get a, uh, a group of guys on a workshop usually. There might be guys who are really gung-ho to start with, but kind of just lose their steam. And there's often these dark horses, these guys who are just like coming in normal, not amazing social skills, not amazing looks or anything, but they're just like, I'm going to do this and I'm gonna to continue to do this. And then I do this. Those are the guys that get good at this. The guys that get hot girls or amazing women into their lives uh, through cold approach are the ones who go over, say hi, say some shit in the middle, and then say, I wanna take you out tonight, right? I wanna take you out on a date, not let's hang out sometime and maybe we could something. It's like, I want to see you again. I wanna take you out. I wanna meet you. The guys who do that, practice saying something to start with, ask her how she's going and what she likes to do and does she have a pet and uh, you know, what's this something that she's good at and is she really very good at that? And oh, she's got a cheeky smile. That's something. And then say, listen, you're cute and fun. I wanna see you again, let's meet tonight. Those are the guys that get hot girlfriends. Those are the guys that get to fuck beautiful women's. Women's, women's. Those are the guys that don't spend months and years being frustrated and alone and then later bitter uh, and recriminating towards women in the world. This matters. And this last one, I can't teach you how to do it. I've, I've tried. I mean, I can force people to go and approach. Like if you really can't do it, come here, pay me the money. I will make you. You will talk to girl. I promise if, you're, if you have a week with me, there's no avoiding it. Okay, if you, if you really need that, you want that acceleration, then come and do it. But it's possible to do it alone or to get started alone. And it is imperative. It is necessary. You only get one life. You only get one chance at this. Uh, and without the ability and the mindset to just fucking pull the trigger, to just have 10 seconds of extreme bravery a bunch of times, to, these are the things that mean the difference, like massive differences in timelines of like, that girl might have totally changed your life. You might end up marrying her, having kids with her, or having a beautiful love affair. And she was ready to. She's single, she's horny, she likes your type of guy. And she, and she might even have even noticed you. And then you just let her walk by and that timeline's dead. That relationship's dead. You killed your future children. <laughs> and of course, we can't take all the timelines. There are many dead children out there that we can't account for. But being able to take that shot more often than not, or at least sometimes, is the defining piece of what it is, of being a man who gets what you want in life. It doesn't just relate to seduction with women, of course. It's the same thing of being able to go over and, to your mentor and say, hey man, I've always been interested in your stuff and I've got a proposal for you. To go into your boss and demand a raise, to be able to travel the world and take risks, to follow your passions. Like all of these things require extreme amounts of short-term bravery. And the world responds and rewards those who go for it. Not every time you will get slapped down more times then you'll get accepted. And that is good for you. This, genera this generation, <laughs> this generation is fucked for a number of reasons. But one of them is because they have not been taught to socialize outside of screens. And this is particularly bad for, for men because they socialize slower and worse than women in general. And, and the idea of meeting someone in real life is now taboo and weird. 
right? Like whenever one of our infill videos goes a bit viral, all these people are like, ooh, this is creepy. Whoa, talking to someone on the street, not okay. You're like, what? It's not okay anymore, apparently. And don't worry about if it's feminism or whatever. It's just the zeitgeist has shifted and people think it's normal to live in isolation in bubbles and live in virtual realities and not actually go and get their penises inside real women. Until the sex robots are indistinguishable from the real thing, <laughs> I suggest the real thing. So, I'll leave those with you. There's some tips. And they're quite profound. I know I blazed through them very quickly, but I wanted to you know, dump this once a year, giving my, you know, all my ideas on how to get over this, what feels like a crippling anxiety. I know, I get it, right? I've been through it and I've taught countless guys. I've seen the reactions that they have. It feels painful, it feels scary. It feels like it's insurmountable. But trust me on this, just over that hill of intense, awkward feelings is a respite. You know, just over that sensation of like, oh, I'll never, and I go over and I say hi, is a woman smiling and saying hello to you and giving her energy to you and possibly much more. What's the alternative? What's your plan? Think about it. Before I go, important announcement, which is that you have less than 24 hours to take advantage of the Black Friday sales for the natural lifestyles. Right now, I am offering up to, in some cases, above 50% discounts on my online trading programs. That's all of them, including the Dating Accelerator with the nuts and bolts of how to get started, Martial Meditation Method, where you learn to stay rock solid, cool, calm, and collected under pressure, the Five Principles of Natural Seduction, which is my meta, massive explanation and complete toolkit when it comes to uh, natural style seduction and all of my other courses. Available now for up to, in some cases, over 50% off until Sunday night. So take advantage of this. Click the links below. See you in the next video. Peace.